What is up, beautiful people? It's Wolf Brother Mythos from the channel Frost and Fist, and welcome to this video. This video is just a quick little tutorial. I've had a few people ask me how I do my power sword effect, and uh, it's nothing too complicated. It is something I use an airbrush for, uh, but as far as airbrush techniques go, it's a pretty simple one. I'll walk you guys through it, and uh, you guys let me know what you think. Keep in mind, I'm doing pinks and purples today. Now, I know that's not everybody's cup of tea, but you can replicate this with um, other colors. You know, just go dark blue and a light blue, dark green and a light green. You know, one thing that really helps make this easy, though, is if you have a color for that middle color we're going to look at, that's a transparent color. Um, fluorescent paints, uh, uh, transparent paints like contrast or pro acryl transparent paints. Transparent paints do a really good job at providing a tinting color or a filter. So anyways, um, I'll show you guys what I'm doing and then uh, you guys let me know if this helps any of you at all. All right, beautiful people. So this is the model we're gonna work on today. It's a blade guard veteran for my custom colored Space Wolves army. Now I've primed the sword white. I've put down some Wicked Colors fluorescent purple. Get that nice gorgeous color of purple there. And next I'm going to do an undershade to really make my sword more vibrant when I put the power weapon effect through. So what I'm going to do here is I've got some white ink. I am just going to always like to test on a piece of scrap paper to make sure my consistency is coming out the way I want it to. There we go. Drop the pressure on the airbrush and just check it on the paper. Now I've got using an ink which is much wetter than of course your average paint so I always drop my pressure nice and low. Nice and low. And of course I check my consistency on the paper because um, finding out that the product's not coming out the way you want it on the miniature feels bad. You know, if it's too heavy, you start getting sputtering or whatever, it feels bad to do it on a miniature. So I always like to keep a piece of scrap paper around. Then I'm just going to use short strokes back and forth across where I want that glow. I like to use a little bit of a, a diagonal line across the blade myself. And I'm going to replicate that same kind of diagonal uh, on the other side. Let's see if I can crisp up that diagonal. And I'm going to take that to the other side and kind of keep it in the same direction. Or towards the top of the blade. Now you could just do the hot spot there, purple and white, not a bad power sword effect, but I like to do usually three colors. Um, so right now I'm going to replicate this on my other blade guard and I'll be right back with the next color. Alright, next I'm going to boost my pressure a little bit higher and come in with some Vallejo Magenta, uh, fluorescent magenta. I just want to tint this white area. I don't want to go too hard. But just tint it to a nice transition. And that white ink you undercoated with, they can blend together nicely. Really provide some pop. Looks a little bright and a little harsh now, but we'll be coming back with that white color and adding a little pop in the middle and it should help mellow it out. Alright, now we're going to go back to the white ink and really drop our pressure down so that way we can get nice and tight while still keeping it smooth. Again, try it out on your paper. We just want to go in with a thin line across that same diagonal. Better to have to do it gradually, barely leaving any product at all, and have to come back several times than to really overblow it. But just by doing that little hot spot of white, it makes that pink area look much less harsh. 
It really makes the blade look hotter too. Of course, you know, you can do as much or as little as you like if you really want to leave, you know, that middle color really showing or that highlight color really showing. You can do as, adjust it to your tastes. And that's it guys, that's how it looks on my Blade Guard Veteran. It's all completed and ready to go. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me down in the comments below. If you like this tutorial, make sure that you grab up an ox and smash that like button in the name of the Emperor. And if you guys are not yet subscribed to the channel, and if you're not subscribed to any of our brothers down in the comments below, then we would sure love to have you as part of the pack here on the Frost Emphasis. Until later guys, stay frosty. Wow, that didn't sound confident at all.